Well said. Thank well you. said. Um, any memories from uh, WrestleMania 32, like actually being in the ring once Austin got in there? Did it feel? Well, yeah, yeah. The... <laughs> so... I'm just, oh, I found the spot on my forearm. Okay, it's still there. It still hurts. Reason being. You, you have a tender spot. I have a forearm. tender spot right, <laughs> right here. I can find it every time. This is going back eight years, right? Yep. So uh, I'm sitting back there. I'm nervous, right? And I know I'm going to come in. I'm on the no-touch list. So I can hit them. They can't hit me. I'm going to do the big running knee. I'm going to do the forearms in the corner. And then that's pretty much all she wrote. And Seamus comes up and he goes, and right before he goes out for his match, he goes, I want you to hit me as hard as you can in the head, fella. And I said, I, I, I I think I can make it look good without doing that. And he looks me right in the eye and goes, as hard as you can, as hard as you can. And that took all the weight off my shoulders. Sure. So when I got in there, now I had worked really hard on the, the 50 pounds. You know, I had a personal trainer and I, you know, later on I started doing DDP and wow. going swimming and all that stuff. And especially when you're in the pool and you're doing your uppercuts and your hooks until you're just exhausted. I mean, that really is a good thing for the forearms, right? And bing, 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 bing. So I watched them back and I wondered if someone had sped up the film. Wow. I was like, I don't think that's me in there. But I hit Seamus as hard as I could, 28 times. It wasn't just 10, it was like he was okay two minutes later, and I could still point to the spot eight years later where my, <laughs> where my forearm... It's really sore. Right? It's really sore. I'd love to... It's probably some calcium buildup on an x-ray, you know, but that may have been the... I still think they would look good. Yeah. But I go back to, like, 99 when I was in the corner with Hunter, and he was, like, bringing out the best of me. That was kind of how it felt with Seamus because he's in his glory, you know? I'm hitting him as hard as I can, and... He, it's WrestleMania, <laughs> and he was a fan of mine, and so I, I think we both we both enjoyed that. Remind us about the story with Hunter in the corner where he brought out the best. Well, yeah, well, I just done the the big reveal, um, switching from Mankind to Cactus Jack, which Hunter could have sn <laughs> snubbed, <laughs> nipped at the bud, right? If he just didn't sell it, or if he sold it like, yeah, it's the same guy in a different shirt. Yeah. And instead, he sold it like it was a ghost from his past, and like it was a whole new human being. Yes. So that when I did hit the ring, he instinctively knew I have to, I have to bring it. And so I was in that corner, and he was like, okay, you know, just little things. It says you're not, you're not writing a dissertation in there, yeah. but just come on, come on, come on, come on, boom, boom. And so when I did the running knee. I actually, I think I bruised my sternum. I never wow. went to the doctor for it, but it was sore for about three weeks because I don't think I had moved that fast before. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's probably going to be the last time we see you in a ring doing anything physical at WrestleMania. That's a, that's a pretty cool way to go out in there with Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold. It's goodness not bad, gracious. Right? Not bad. And then we had this uh, spacious dressing room and, Cena was back there, and uh, you know, and uh, and the Rock stopped by, and Steve. Was, it was really cool. It was really cool. My kids didn't know Dewey. Uh, no, no, Noel and uh, and Huey were there, and they didn't even. I didn't tell them I was going to be on the ring. Oh yet. wow! So that they was, lost their mind. That was a really yeah. It was cool. And my and Dewey was there because he was working for WWE at the time. He just started. I think he just started working with them. Wait, you think no, 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 no. This was 2006. Yeah, 2016, he had just started working with them. Do you think he'll continue to pursue wrestling? Do we? No. It's been two years. He showed no interest in it. You know, I mean, there's a big burnout factor. You know that it's yeah. just, it's uh, even people who, like Freddie Prinze Jr., who talk about it, you know, uh, lovingly uh, or fondly yes uh they'll, they'll tell you it's it's really difficult like jonathan coachman said you know you're expected to bring it every day and they do expect that so when we think about you know wrestlemania obviously we fans sort of consider that the super bowl of wrestling right. do you think the boys consider it that way oh yeah yeah but now that wrestlemania is a two-day event which I think is a great move. Yes. As we've talked before, it was really hard to peak for a main event, mm -hmm. after, not only after a seven-hour show, 
but taking into consideration that at least half the people there have done a minimum of five events. Yes. And some people have done 10 events or more. It's just really hard to peak if you're the main event. If yes. you're anything after that fourth hour, it's difficult. It's tough. To get an audience emotionally up to create a situation where you can have that classic match. Uh, so Mania is still the biggest event, but I think uh, the Rumble is the greatest night of the year. I would agree. The yeah. most fun night of the year. I anticipate the Rumble. I mean, that's what's great about the Rumble is we already know what the match is next year. Yeah. Like, we don't know what the match is for WrestleMania even yeah. this year. But we know next year what you to look expect. look forward to it. And with a couple hiccups along the way, I think I mentioned that uh, when the Rumble was in Philadelphia, there was a big blizzard coming in. So I did the driving. So I dropped my kids off. And when I picked them up, I didn't need to know who won to know that people weren't happy. Right. Because everyone had a slow gait, had their head down. So, and I, and I think I put out a post at that time saying that, you know, the Rumble was in danger of becoming just another show, which I thought at that time it was. And clearly that's not the case anymore because they're, they've really done a good job. And I think, and I had said that I was, you know, months and months, maybe even a year ago, I was giving Hunter an A, and it depends on where things went. Uh, and although this is a grade from someone who's not closely watching the product, I'd have to give him an A+. Plus. Yes. Because he, he has stuck to programs that needed the longevity, uh, the character uh, building has been really good. And I think you can see, you know, that he has been given more, more reign to create the big shows the way he sees fit. And I think WWE is really benefiting from that. I have to totally agree. I think WWE is as hot as they've ever been right yeah. now, and I'm excited to see what they do at WrestleMania. But I wanted to ask about, you know, if whether or not the boys felt like it was, you know, the Super Bowl of wrestling, even from an outsider perspective. Yeah. Well, I'm not pretending that you're friends with Okada, but he is like the hottest free agent in wrestling yeah. right now. And and there's reports out there that perhaps Tony Khan and AEW would allow a schedule where he could still live in Japan. Perhaps WWE would require he live here in the states. But allegedly, Okada would really like to perform at a WrestleMania. Would that shock you? That, no. I mean, no. I mean, you know, going back decades when the Garden, Madison Square Garden, was essentially the pay per view. Yes. You know, if you had the Garden on your schedule, it was going to be a big month, and they would bring in big stars that uh, the rest that the WWF fans may not have been aware of. And that you largely heard about through the magazines, but like Dusty, Mil Mascaris, Mil Mascaris and Dusty Rhodes, you know. But I remember Dusty cutting a promo on uh, on Adrian Street, and I'd never heard of Adrian Street. I think it yeah. was '83, and then uh, and Anoki would have a chance to wrestle over there. So, I th in the same way that I think fans are really grateful to see someone like Jordi and Grace in the women's Rumble, they want to see the biggest stars. So why not just give guys a chance to blow the roof off the place, even if there's not a heck of a lot of build there? 